Hey guys, welcome to the video, and here today we are going to cover just some of the basics regarding PS1 and PS2 emulation. Now some of you have been part of the CFW scene for a while, and so a lot of the stuff that I'm going to tell you, you're familiar with. Uh, but there's going to be like maybe some uh, tips and tricks here that you may not know, so um, you may want to watch, you know, you might learn something new. This is primarily for those who are new to the scene and who are not all too familiar with emulation on the PS3. So we're just going to cover some of the basics. Now the later videos that I release after this will get more complex, especially those revolving around PS2. The emulation videos I'm going to do after this one will pretty much focus strictly on PS2 and will focus on how to emulate on CFW systems that are not on Rebug, and also we're going to focus on other things such as stripping down the ISO and the bin files to make them smaller, because a lot of the PS2 files have padded files and stuff in them that just make them overly too, uh, big and too large, and we can subtract a lot of that stuff without compromising the game in any way, shape, or form. And after we're done with this video, and those videos I just mentioned, then we will focus on the retro arch stuff, the different retro arches, as well as the uh, other emulators. For today, we will be focusing primarily on PS1 and PS2. We will be on uh, CFW Rebug, which means, of course, you need to have a modded PS3 for any of this stuff to work. Um, it's also assumed that from this point forward, any time that we mention ISO files, bin files, or any other type of backed up files, that it is just that, a backed up file of the hard copy that you've obtained legally. Everybody has a right to back up any uh, media that they've obtained legally, and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do here today. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So let's focus here on setting up um, the easiest way to play PS2 games on your modded PS3. And this would be, obviously, you need to have Rebug installed and the Rebug Toolbox, as I mentioned earlier. In the Toolbox, you should have Cobra mode enabled. You should leave Toggle PS2 Emulator set to Cobra and then uh, Toggle Webman to enabled as well. And then if you have to reboot, go ahead and either quit or go to Restart System and do a full reboot in order to uh, reboot. For PS1, it's really easy. Uh, because PS1 emulation is already native to all PS3s, and some people don't know that. You can actually put a PS1 disc even into a super slim PS3 that's not even modded, and it should be able to play it without any problems. So setting up PS1, there's not much you have to do because it's already built in to all PS3s. So this is for PS2. So anyway, once you go ahead and you reboot the system, um, then go into Multiman, and I'll show you what to do from there, and I'll meet you there. Okay, so in this next step, we're going to show you how to back up your physical uh, copy of the games. So go ahead and insert your game disc, whether it's PS1 or PS2, it works uh, pretty much all the same. You should see the game pop up. Now, since PS1 emulation is native to PS3, you're actually going to see the name of the game uh, pretty much pop up. And if you're in Multiman and Multiman is connected to the internet, after a little while, and if you hit refresh a couple of times after a minute or two, it may even find um, the, uh, the cover art or the box art as it did here. PS2 is not native to PS3, so when you put the PS2 game in, what it may do a lot of times is it'll just show a bunch of numbers here instead of the name, and it's just going to show a, a disk icon, and believe me, that's perfectly normal. Also, what may happen, guys, is when you insert these disks, uh, multi-man screen will just go black. Some words will pop up in the middle of the screen, and it will say something to the effect of um, a different format has been detected or something like that. It's going to eject the disk on its own, and then it will take it back in, so don't worry about it, and you'll be brought back here to the XMB. Once you are here at the XMB, go ahead and just highlight the game, press triangle on it, and then you're going to go over to um, create ISO. And I strongly, strongly recommend at this point 
that you save it always to your internal drive. And once it's in the internal drive and you confirmed that the game actually works, then go into whatever file manager you want and transfer the game over to your external drive. You can even come here and do it. But remember, Multiman only deals with FAT32 drives. So anyway, once we pick our destination, which as I always recommend it, you should uh, pick the internal drive, just press X and it will create the ISO image. Now you will do this for either PS1 or PS2 games. Oh, and one of the things I need to mention, guys, also, is that, especially with PS1 games, this seems to happen, is that a lot of times as it's creating the ISO image, you will see that it says 0%, and the progress bar is not moving. But if you actually look closely into the background, you will see that it's actually reading the files, and it's giving you an ETA time, and you'll see that that ETA, as you go further and further down, it starts getting less and less and less. So you can see that it is actually reading the files and copy it, uh, copying them, even though you don't see um, the progress bar moving. So as long as these are being copied, then you're good to go. And once you are done, it may kick you back to the PS3's XMB. And if it does, don't worry about it. Just come back into Multiman. And then you should still see your game there. You can go ahead and eject it, either physically or by coming here and hitting eject. When we go over to the retro column, the game should be there. And there it is. It says Crash Team Racing. And it's got the box art. Again, it did this because Multiman is connected to the internet and it found it, it's not going to find the box art to every game, whether it's PS1 or PS2, especially if it's PS2. Um, and again, most of the time when it's a PS1 game, it will find the name. But if it's like an import of something and it has a strange name, it just may display a bunch of numbers or something else on there and it won't show the box art. But I'm going to show you how to change that in just a minute. From here, you can just press X if it's a PS1 game and it should begin uh, and, and just start normally it will go straight into ps1 emulation if it's a ps2 game it will load it to the xmb and once the xmb you can launch it from there multi-man cannot play games from an external drive so if you choose a game from an external drive it's going to tell you it can't play it and it's going to copy that game either into the psx iso folder or the ps2 iso folder depending on what type of game it is so let's head on over to the file manager Okay, so here we're going to go over to PS3 root. We're going to go to dev HDD0. And here you can see is the PS2 ISO folder. And here's the PSX ISO folder, which is for uh, PS1 backups. Now, sometimes your backup file may be just an ISO as it is here. Uh, but sometimes you may come across the files that are bin. If it's a bin file and it has a queue, just put the bin in the queue file where they belong. For example, here in the PS2 folder, I have Bloody Roar 3 backed up, and it generated a bin and a queue file, because I had done this with my PC, and I put them both in here. I also put box art image, and as you can see, the bin and the queue are named exactly the same, and then I added my own box art, and I named it exactly the same as the bin and the queue file. So here in the PSX ISO, the game we just backed up from the disc is Crash Team Racing, and it found the box art and everything, and they're both already named the same. In this case, this is an ISO image, so it doesn't need uh, the queue file. If your backup doesn't have a clear name, if it's just a bunch of numbers or whatever, and it doesn't have the box art, don't worry about it. Once you've tested the game, and you've launched it, and you know it works, then you can always come back here to the folder and you can insert any image that you want. That image can't be larger than 600 by 600, so it could be anything below that. As long as the length is an even number, the width of the image has to be an even number as well. And as long as neither one exceeds 600, then you'll be good to go. And both of those numbers, each one needs to be an even number. You need to rename the image exactly as the game, and then you should be fine, as long as it ends in .jpg or .png. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that. Let's go ahead and head on over to the XMB of the PS3.
All right, so here back at the XMB, if we go to Webman Games, one of the things you're going to do is that whenever you make changes to one of the ISO folders, whether it's PS2 ISO, uh, PS1 ISO, even PS3 ISO folder, whenever you make changes to any of the ISO folders, whether you're adding a backed up game image like an ISO or a bin file, or even if it's just a, a box art, or if you're taking away something from the folders, then whenever you make changes to any of those ISO folders, in order for the changes to take place here in Webman, you need to come to Webman Setup, and then you need to go up to Refresh XML right here. You're going to press it, wait a few seconds. You'll then be prompted to click here, and it'll show you some words right here. It'll say click here to reboot your PS3. You'll click there on those words when they pop up, and then your PS3 will be rebooted. And when you come back, whatever changes you made to the ISO folders, should uh, populate. In this case, I had already done it earlier, and so the game is there along with the box art. And you can mess with the box art however you like. If it comes out a little bit too stretchy or looking weird, just mess with the sizes. Um, in this case, this one looks pretty good, but it's a little bit too dark, so I may um, mess with the image some or just find a whole uh, completely different one and install that. But anyway, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and let's cover playing the games actually off an external um, hard drive. So if you're looking for an easy plug and play works every single time solution to play your backed up ISO files off of an external drive, there really isn't one, not for PS2 and uh, PS1 backed up games. You can install the latest WebMem mod and have your um, external drive formatted to FAT32 and that should give you a lot more success. Although some people have said that they've been able to play their PS2 backups and whatever um, off of an NTFS external drive when they have the latest WebMem mod installed. But this is not the case for everybody. So you can install the latest WebMem mod, which as of the making of this video is 1.47.06. Once it's installed, do a refresh XML after you've plugged in your external hard drive and then you know, when it finds the, the backups that um, you backed up into the external drive, you know, whether it's the PS2 or PS1 or whatever, then, you know, just try and play it. I suggest you start, you know, if you want to try it as NTFS first, try it, see if it works. If not, convert it over to FAT32 and then try it. Or just use FAT32 right from the get-go. Uh, it's really up to you. I don't use the latest WebMem mods because ever since version 1.46.00, I've had various things happen to my PS3 where I always end up coming right back to this one. This is the stock one that comes with Rebug 481, and this version is 1.45.09. In this version, you cannot play off of external HDDs. Instead, what it'll do is if I go to this PS1, and uh, if, if it was if this uh, Crash Team Racing was on an external, even FAT32 drive, when I press X on it, it's going to automatically copy it to the internal HDD, which is not what I want. Um, so yeah, you can try it. If it doesn't work for you or it does the stuff to your PS3, um, then you can always completely remove the WebMem mod and go back to the stock one. I did a video a while back on how to do that. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for now. Let me go ahead and just load up the game just to show you that it's working. And um, just to uh, give you a few more tips and bits of info here as it's loading up. So whenever you back up these games and you have an ISO or a bin file that you've tested on your PS3 um, and it works, that ISO or bin file or whatever could be used in other emulators. In this case, we backed up our PS1 uh, game disk and we got the PS1 ISO. Now it's working on the PS3, so I know that it will work pretty much on any other PS1 emulator, like on my PC or some other device. The same holds true for um, PS2 ISOs. The other thing is using this method uh, with Rebug and the Toolbox and Webman, it's region free. So I've been able to, you know, back up um, imports and they've been able to play just fine without having to do anything. And uh, if you use other methods, the old-fashioned way, you would have had to change files around and decompile the ISO or bin files and then recompile them, and uh, it's a headache. And this way, 
um, you don't have to do much of anything. So as you can see, the game is loading up just fine. And um, I will be making a few more videos regarding primarily PS2 um, ISOs, but maybe with PS1 stuff, um, dealing with what to do when you get corrupt data. Another video that will show um, how to insert cheats into your PS2 images and yet another one dealing with the old-fashioned way of how to play the PS2 um, backups and um, and yeah stuff like that as well as removing large unnecessary files from the PS2 um, backed up image all right guys that's pretty much it sorry this was so long don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one